Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Causes of Mental Disorder, Common Things People Do That Lead to Mental Issues, said Guru. So this is kind of a big deal, of course, in the West. And again, I think it's a growing thing, especially, yeah, in the West. <laughs> Amazingly, I'll, I'll say this. <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to think about, is it affecting, say, westernized countries? So South Korea and Japan. Kind of, well, actually, there is, I don't know too much, but it doesn't seem like it, but I think there is a little bit there. But it's a bit different than the West itself. Um, I think that the West uh, and people in the West just seeks uh, a lot of things externally, and which causes uh, what I believe to be the mental health. They need acceptance from everyone, or they're going to be troubled by it. So anyways, let's go give this video a shot. What, in your view, is the fundamental cause of mental disorders? As you see, societies get more and more affluent. They start eating worse and worse food. Cognition level slowly will go down. Purge the system, clean the colon, suddenly you feel little balanced. Believe me, your aging process is almost... will not progress. So, Sadhguru, what in your view is the fundamental cause of mental disorders? Me, real quick, social media. And uh, to some degree a little bit of history as well. I won't explain any deeper than that with the history part, though. Uh, if you're asking for one cause... Well, it could be many. See, one thing is the way we eat. It's a very big part of mental illness. The way we are ingesting chemicals and hormones today unconsciously at various levels is a serious part of mental illnesses of this generation. How we ingest, how we take food in, uh, this may sound a little far-fetched for UK, but please listen to me carefully. We... we look at life there like this. You are who you are as a person. You are who you are because of the parentage that you had, the schools that you went to, the education that you had, now the exposure that you have in your life. That's why you have become this kind of a person, isn't it? It's all many, many things receiving. So all the times you're receiving, what you're receiving is not just information and thought. Life receives in so many levels, on the energetic level it receives. So in India we see that anywhere if you want to receive something, first thing is you cross your legs, all right? Right now I'm sitting that way, it may not be visible to you. But uh, first thing is cross your legs because we don't want to receive from the lower part of our body. We want to receive... anything positive means we want to receive from the upper part of our body. So if you go to some place where we think it's energetically strong, first thing is we cross our legs and keep our hands open. You know, in the yogic physiology, it's like this. There are uh, 112 chakras, 114, but actually 112 within the human system. Out of these 112, there are seven categories of them, 16 in each one of them. These seven are generally known in the world today as chakras. So the first three, or survival processes. And the in-between one is uh, representing a meeting of this. It is from here on, from Anahata onwards, which is enlightening processes of life. So in that sense, it is important you receive certain things in s uh, certain ways. Food is considered very basic level of reception. How we receive food, what we receive is very important. Today, what are we receiving? Well, I do agree diet does matter a bit, <clears throat> but I don't know if it matters as much as social media because, I mean, uh, <laughs> I guess the information that we receive from social media is so much quicker and so much more digestible in so little time because, <clears throat> uh, you know, you can go through like, I guess one is TikTok or Twitter or even YouTube or Facebook, whatever, you know, social media in general. 
And you're just sort of going through all of it. And then the, the fact that these things, while food, yeah, you do eat and you get the, uh, you can get some bad stuff, but once you're full, you stop. <coughs> and social media, though, you don't really get full. I mean, you get tired maybe sometimes, but generally you can consume a lot more social media than you can of food. Right now, as you see, societies get more and more affluent. They start eating worse and worse food. <laughs> what a rural person in India would not touch, very sophisticated cities are eating that kind of food. When I say that kind of food, almost anything that Western societies are using today are a minimum thirty to sixty days old. In yoga, their food is classified as sattva, rajas and tamas. Tamas means inertia. If you eat anything which has tamas, inertia will come in your system. Inertia does not mean you just become lazy. Inertia means certain things slow down. Certain things means essentially regeneration of the system slows down. Today you know that neural… Uh, neuronal regeneration is one of the most important aspect of keeping your brain reasonably functionable, functional throughout your life. If you are consuming foods which are tamasic or causes inertia in the general function of your system, in the energetic process of who you are, then you will see cognition level slowly will go down over a period of time. Because everybody understands this, this is why they're drinking cups and cups of uh, Coca-Cola or coffee or alcohol or something else because they know they need to balance that. So this kind of balance uh, is a very rudimentary way of balancing your system that you're putting wrong things and then you're trying to correct it with right things. The highest number of uh, antacids in the world, nearly sixty percent of the world's antacids are so sold in America, the most affluent population on the planet. This means they have a whole choice of nourishment. They can eat the best food, but no, they will eat the worst food because commercial forces will decide what you eat. You cannot eat consciously anymore what you want to eat. In the yogic culture, if you cook something, the maximum time in which you can eat it is one and a half hours, ninety minutes. Before that, you should have eaten the food. After that, we won't touch the food because it has started gathering tamas, inertia will begin to happen. If you want to experiment, you can experiment. You something… eat something very fresh for one week, eat something which is processed and kept for one month, two months and then eat it, you will see the level of alertness in the system, you will notice it in your experience. But it is happening at the cellular level, it is happening in terms of… we call this ojas, there is no English word for that. If you create sufficient ojas, which is a non-physical dimension of energy, if every cell in your body is wrapped in this, believe me, your aging process is almost… will not progress. Your cellular age will almost remain stag stagnant for a long period of time. Some of the tests they have done on me and, uh, you know, <laughs> they are saying that I am… my cellular age is twenty-five. Well, I still am like twenty-five, I'm maintaining the same level of activity, I'm maintaining the same weight, same everything. This is not some miracle. Every human being is capable of this with some simple attention to fundamental things. Going further in terms of food, there is something called as viruddha ahara. <clears throat> that means, if you eat one thing and put another thing which works opposite to that, then in your system there is a war. You know digestive process is largely between acids and alkalines and all this stuff. For example, you eat meat which is fatty. If you ate it by itself, it may not cause that much damage. But you ate that with rice and ghee. You call that biryani and you ate it. Now the damage is big because these two things will not go together. The m this is why any… any non-vegetarian food and milk and milk-related food were never mixed because the moment you mix it, it will go opposite to each other and you create a battle within yourself. In the yogic culture, food should not… should not remain in your stomach bag for more than two and a half hours. <coughs> That's interesting because uh, I do remember when I was doing research about dieting and stuff, <clears throat> carbs are the ones that gets processed through your body really quickly. <clears throat> the next thing that gets processed through your body really quickly is protein. 
then the slowest one is fats. Fats takes a long time that sits in your body. Uh, protein is the next, and then uh, or that's quicker. Then carbs is the quickest. It'll go through your body really quick. <coughs> but the problem, I guess, is, is the fact that if well, I don't know if it's a problem or not. I guess you could say is that um, if it goes through your stomach really quickly, if you don't burn it up, it'll get stored as fat. Uh, yeah, sort of fat, I believe. And then protein takes, it, it burns, it, it's digested a little bit slower. And it goes, I believe, I don't know if it goes through your system slower, though, or not. Like, I think it sits in your stomach a, a longer period of time, but in your intestines, I don't know if it sits there longer than, say, carbs or fat. I'm not sure about that one. I've never thought about it that way. But I think, I do believe <clears throat> that carbs through your stomach goes the quickest. Next is protein. So any kind of protein uh, takes a little bit longer for your stomach to digest. Then fat takes a lot longer for your body to digest in terms of carbs. So quickest, middle, and then slowest. But I don't know how, how quickly it goes through your intestines. Hmm. But uh, my theory is, is that I'm again, not a dietitian, but you know, People say to eat some protein, that way it sits in your stomach a little bit longer, but you don't have to be full. <coughs> and it'll slowly release energy because it's, take, it's, it's taken its time to, pro, uh, to process in your body. So you have this very consistent energy level because of the protein taken a little bit. Again, I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> but it's my assumption, though. Um, again, you, in order to know for sure, obviously ask a dietitian. Um, or you can even do it yourself to find out, say, eat, eat no, uh, maybe protein or something. I don't know. I don't think you should do that. <laughs> but up to you to determine whether something, uh, how often you eat per day. Within two and a half hours, it should have moved out. You must be feeling empty stomach. Hunger will not come. Empty stomach will come. And that is good. We want our stomach to be always empty because in an empty stomach, everything works well. And the colon health is something that's completely neglected today. If you do not keep your colon clean, keeping your mind in a balanced state is very, very difficult. So in Ayurveda and Siddha, first thing, if you say anything, you are having sleepless nights, you are having uh, disturbed something, mild, any kind of psychological problems, first thing is purging. Purge the system, clean the colon, suddenly you feel little balanced. How do you purge the colon though? So in the yoga center, the day starts with a small marble-sized ball of neem and turmeric. There are many aspects to this, of what impact it has on your system. One immediate thing it will do is, it will keep your alimentary tract clean. When we say clean, this is a region where you have maximum amount of uh, other life. So within this elementary tract, there are a whole host of microorganisms. Many of them have turned friendly to us. We are living because of them, we are able to digest food because of them. Many, many functions in the body happen because of them. But still there are many who are harmful to us. The uniqueness of Neem, especially when it is taken along with turmeric. If these two things go together, largely those things which are not necessary for the body, those things can… that which can harm the body, any kind of parasital life which is there, all these things get eliminated. It is not a whole solution, but it will bring the basic necessary atmosphere in the body to make the corrections either with medicine or with necessary practices you can bring about correction. How do we apply this to a person who is suffering right now? That needs a compassionate approach, not a standard approach, my way or your way. It's a very silly way to go at it, but this is the only way it can be done because that's not how human beings are. A judicious action of what could be maximum right rather than wrong. More right than wrong is all you can do. I don't think anybody has an absolute right about mental uh, conditions that people are in. 
thing. There was actually something else I was going to say. I can't think of it now. <clears throat> so I guess, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, diet definitely is one of the aspects. But I think, again, I don't know when this was made. Uh, when the interview was done, as opposed to when the video was released. Those could be on two different dates. <clears throat> but I believe nowadays is social media. I think that's what's <laughs> that's what's uh, causing mental in illness in the majority of cases. Uh, I, while eat, what you're eating can cause uh, a certain type of mental, uh, not a certain type, uh, maybe a small percentage of mental uh, mental illness, but I don't think it's the majority anymore. <clears throat> trying to think, what else did I want to say? Oh yeah. I was wondering if they, uh, I wonder if they have a cookbook, you know, like, Seguro <laughs> Segu has a cookbook in terms of, you know, uh, what to eat, how to cook it, and what not to eat, and whatnot. I'm kind of curious. I would be curious. Definitely, I would like to look at it and read to see, uh, if it's possible, but, uh, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, yeah, I was just thinking the entire time, it's like, he's talking about all this, I was like, hmm. So, there are certain things you should cook, shouldn't cook, what you can and cannot mix. Now, I don't know, um, I'm thinking back to my, to my, uh, let's say, birth country, about the two and a half hour thing. <clears throat> I think that's kind of the case back in the day when there's no refrigerator, no way to preserve food. You know, you kind of, you either keep it fresh and then cook it and, you know, kill it or whatever at the time that you're going to, you know, eat it. And then you have, have, kind of have to eat it all before, you know, germs and stuff starts taking over the food. <clears throat> and with no way to preserve leftovers, you kind of had to eat it within that time frame. I, I do believe that to be true. But now, um, um, what do you call it? Freezing it can keep it fresh. It's not fresh fresh, but can keep it fresh, relatively speaking, uh, a lot longer periods of time. And refrigerator can slow down the growth of bacteria. But of course, even freezers will slow down the growth of bacteria. It will not stop it. Um, because I do believe they say, like, meat, you can kind of freeze up to a year. Um, obviously, that's with, uh, what do you call it? Um, you, I guess you you can't, you know, unfreeze it and then refreeze it. That's no good, no good. No, you, you, you refreeze, you unf unfreeze, <laughs> you thaw what you want to eat. But make sure to put the stuff back in the freezer to keep it from defrosting. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I think the times have changed since uh, um, a lot of the, I guess, the things that are uh, th things of the past. You know, obviously, uh, refrigerators has changed the games in terms of our food. We no longer have to eat it in a certain time frame. Obviously, eating fresh food is the best because it's fresh. Nothing can beat freshness. <laughs> Nothing can beat freshness. <laughs> you don't want to eat an apple, put it in the refrigerator, come back a little bit later. It's going to be not as good as the first time you bit it because a lot of the moisture has escaped. The, the coldness changes the apple a little bit. It's not as crisp. It may be a little bit soggy. So, because obviously a freezer, I mean your freezer, your, well your freezer too, but more your f refrigerator, obviously the temperature fluctuates between a certain amount but trying to keep it below a certain level, but it still fluctuates though. So your your food is not kept at the same temperature, so it's constantly fluctuating between the temperatures. <laughs> Except your freezer, your freezer is kept below 32 Fahrenheit or zero Celsius, so it, it may fluctuate between minus one Celsius to minus whatever, but it's still below the freezing temp. Same thing with uh, Fahrenheit. Anyways. Um, that's my reaction to causes. I, 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 was talk, I was thinking he was going to say something about like the social media, but I think this might be one of this interview is a little bit earlier on <clears throat> uh, in the year when maybe social media wasn't much of a thing. So that's my reaction to mental disorders. If you like my content, please, please consider subscribing. <laughs> I maybe have a mental disorder right now. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.